We're basically trying to understand what's happening in the brain of these patients with a very severe brain injury. They can be comatose or they can be locked in, which means they're fully conscious but they just can't express it, or vegetative, unresponsive, minimally responsive, and that helps us to make a better diagnosis, a prognosis, and then improve their chances of recovery. And Dr. Lorius, in his investigations, has created a whole new diagnostic category, that of minimally conscious state. And we know that there are people with serious brain injuries that go from coma to minimally conscious state uh, where they do maintain some awareness of what's going on around them. And oftentimes these people ultimately emerge from the minimally conscious state to uh, recovery. When you have a patient in front of you and, and, and you would examine him at the bedside and conclude, well, there is no sign of consciousness, meaning I don't see a motor sign of consciousness. And when your different tests, your machines, the scanners and all the recordings you do tell you that in reality there is brain activity going on and the results show you that the patient actually is conscious, I think these are very important moments. One experiment they did involved having patients uh, asking them to either imagine playing tennis or walking around their house and then having them do this while being in a brain scanning machine and behaviorally these patients show no signs of understanding or responding to the question but a subset of the patients show very specific patterns of brain activity not just associated with hearing the commands but actually with engaging in the task so you see activity related to motor planning and motor activity for playing tennis, activity related to navigation for the question about walking around your house. For me, consciousness is an emergent property of the collective activity of your brain. Actually, uh, it's depending on the critical function of a global workspace that has, I think, now been identified in the frontal parietal uh, areas of your brain. The big question just is, well, how exactly does it happen? I think that our scientific understanding is not necessarily reducing our uh, way to perceive in a spiritual way the uh, world around us, rather on the contrary. To me, it's more interesting to understand the sunset and to experience it, and the same for understanding brain function and uh, enjoy it.